Yeah, this lesson is going to be on the abrasion resistance, tear strength and the peeling of a fabric. The objectives of the present day's lesson is about to understand the importance of the fabric, tear strength, peeling and abrasion in relation to its use. To identify different factors that affect the tear strength, peeling and abrasion properties. To see or comprehend about the different type of equipment and the working procedures used in assessing the properties and to express the results in the units of appropriate measure. So, let us see first about the abrasion resistance. Fabrics after certain amount of time period will become unserviceable due to many factors, but one basic thing is the abrasion and we can take abrasion as one aspect of wear. That is wearing is giving away any part of the material by rubbing it against another surface be it the fabric surface or any other external surface. Generally abrasion can be seen during wearing, using, cleaning and the washing process where the fabric gets distorted, causes the fibers or the yarns to be pulled out and removes the short fiber ends from the surface. So, in other terms when we take abrasion it is the physical destruction of fibers or the yarns or the fabrics due to the rubbing of textile material over another surface. It becomes a more serious problem especially in certain parts of the apparel like a collar, cuff, underarms and even in the pocket region. It is also a problem which we encounter in the home textiles like carpets, upholstery fabrics, socks and of late we have been coming across in the technical textiles as well. There are certain terms which are related to this basically two terms serviceability and wear. Serviceability can be described as uh, capable of performing a useful service it is actually a relative term and wear would be the amount of deterioration of a fabric due to the breaking or cutting or removal of the fibers that happens due to friction. There are certain factors or different conditions where abrasiveness will be caused on the fabrics. The first thing is friction between textile materials. When a jacket or a coat lining on a shirt would rub against each other or a pant pocket would rub against the pant fabric, we see the friction between the textile materials. When the trousers we wear is rubbing against a seat where the person would be seated, we see the friction between textile materials to the external object. So, in a fabric we can see the friction between fibers because of the dust or the grit which would cut the fibers in fact. And we can also observe friction between the fabric components like when we are bending them, flexing them, stretching them where because of all these usages the fabric will have a fiber slippage, friction due to these and finally there is a breakage of the yarn. Now there are three types of abrasion mostly considered where we call a plain or a flat abrasion when the flat area of the material is abraded. We have the second one called the edge abrasion where abrasion occurs especially at the ends of the collars and the folds. The third type of abrasion is the flex abrasion where rubbing is accompanied because of the bending or flexing of the material. Now there are certain factors which would affect the abrasion resistance. The first is the fiber type high elongation, elastic recovery and work of rupture these type of properties when present in a fiber are considered to be more important factors. Blending of nylon or polyester with wool or any other fiber in fact improves the abrasion property of the fabric. Coming to fiber properties, longer fibers give better abrasion resistance because it is not possible to remove them very easily from the yarn. Yarn twist is another factor where if low twist is given fibers can come out of this and the abrasion will be higher. And the optimum twist in fact would increase the abrasion resistance that means neither too low a twist or too high a twist will definitely lead to higher abrasion. And coming to the fabric structure the set of yarns that are more predominant on the surface of the fabric structure say for example when we take a satin fabric or a twill fabric we can see that one set of yarns will be lying on the surface of the fabric or face of the fabric these fibers or the yarns would be abraded first. Now there is certain factors that would 
affect the abrasion test result also that is the condition of the specimen. So, unless directed the fabric will be conditioned and tested in a standard testing atmosphere. We also have to consider about the choice of testing instrument which depends on the character of the testing desired. Either we want a flat abrasion to be tested or a flexing abrasion to be tested, we have to decide about it. Then the choice of abrasive motion, because there are different types of motions like reciprocatory motion or multidirectional. So, we have to decide because each of this machine would give a different type of motion. The type of abrasive motion that is going to affect the fabric has to be considered. And the direction of abrasion. Resistance in specific directions can be measured either the warp way or the weft way and also at an angle the fabric can be abraded to test about the resistance of the fabric. And the next one would be the choice of abradant. So, the severity of the abrading material would also create the abrading of the fabric. Quality of abradant has to be remain the same throughout the test procedure and throughout the samples that are used. Generally, steel or silicon carbide gives a reasonable constant abrasive qualities, whereas we can also use abrasive materials like canvas fabric or emery cloth. But here, there is a risk of abrasive properties being changed very often during even a test. The next factor is the backing of the specimen, where hardness of the backing of the specimen may affect the result. The cleanliness of the specimen and the instrument is also to be considered because sometimes they also may act as a lubricant giving a wrong result of abrasion. The testing of the specimen. Generally standard methods of mounting the specimen should be used to avoid errors due to variation in the tension used. The pressure between the abradant and the specimen also has to be considered because suitable standards must be set up where high pressure and acceleration may lead to very false conclusions of the abrasion resistance. We have a Martindale's abrasion tester which is designed in a way to give a controlled amount of abrasion between fabric surface at a very low pressure and in a continuously changing direction. So, it can be used on cotton, it can be used on blended textiles, it can be used on synthetic materials as well as woven and knitted structures also can be tested on this. It uses principles of two harmonic motions working at right angles and it can be used or getting a circular or linear motion. The motion can be varied. Varied changing pressure and type of abrading materials can also be changed on this machine. So, it consists of an aluminum plate supported by three pillars. On top of the each pillar, there is a ball caster and a steel ball present in it and another plate is placed on top of these three steel balls and there is a driving arrangement for the plate which consists of a mechanical device of work and warm wheel driving three circular calm discs. And on the calms there are three pegs provided with bush bearings and the pegs are engaged in the slots of the plate. So, there are two outside pegs which work in two slots in the same line and the center pin or the peg would work in the slot at right angles creating a harmonic motion. So, the top plate consists of four holes, there are some circular sample holders to clamp onto this top plate. So, four specimens are actually required or it can be tested at a time on this tester of 38 mm diameter which are cut circular and fixed on the sample holders. So, these sample holders will touch the table surface and will move in the same plane in which the top plate slides. So, these four mushroom shaped sample holders are made of brass. Each of these will contain three parts, the crown, the plunger and the pressure ring. So, the fabric sample of 38 centimeters in diameter is placed inside the ring and the circular plunger is put on the top of the cloth and crown is screwed down over the outside of the ring. And it has a holder on which it can be fixed with the help of a spindle and two pressure rings to the top plate. And over this spindle, we can place a weight of either 12 kilo pascals or 9 kilo pascals depending upon the weight that is required to test the abrasiveness of the fabric. There is a special device that is present on one of the platform of this where the sample can be removed and then it can be 
given a proper tension because the tension of the fabric sample in the holder also would create a lot of differences in the abrasive character of the fabric. There is also a counter provided to read the number of rubs the machine has completed. So, beneath each of this holder there will be four abrading tables with serrated steel framework pitted on the base of the machine on which this material is clamped and these mushroom holders with fabric samples rub against these tables. So, it can be used to test the fabric against fabric. So, in such a case the fabric that is being tested can also be placed on this abrading table so that it can be tested in a similar manner or it can be fabric against metal. Now, this Martindale's tester uses a transitional movement tracing a Lissajous figure where a motion resultant from two simple harmonic motions at right angles to one another that is a straight line which becomes gradually widened el ellipse until it forms another straight line in the opposite direction. And it traces the same figure again under known conditions of pressure and abrasive action. So, to test the fabric sample we have to keep the machine on a flat surface see it is leveled and then condition the cut samples under standard atmospheric conditions using the templates and both for the abrading table and the test samples the fabrics can be cut. And then the abrading metal is first fixed on the tables and the fabric sample in the holders and the counter that displays the number of revolutions is set to 0 and then the reset counter is set again which displays a reset switch and a set desired revolutions with the counter setting and the total display can be then pressed down to start. Then when we see the assessment of abrasion damage there are various means of assessing the end result. One is taking the appearance again is an unabraded sample and then or taking the number of cycles required to produce a whole broken thread or broken strip or there can be a loss in weight which is often plotted against the number of cycles and sometimes there is a loss of pile height that is especially when pile fabrics are used we can see there are some changes in thickness that would happen and sometimes when uh, there is no hole or broken thread it can also be tested against the loss in strength especially either using tensile bursting or tearing strength and also it can be tested about for a air permeability and sometimes microscopic examination of the damage that happens to the yarns and fibers also can be tested thereby the assessment of abrasion can be done depending upon the availability and depending upon the type of fabric that is used for abrasion. The next factor that or the mechanical property that we consider is the tear strength which is very important because it is also related to the serviceability of the fabric. In the tear strength the mobility of yarn within the fabric structure would take place. So, it is also tested on a testing mission by observing the loads indicated or recorded when tearing through at least 50 millimeters of the material. There is an element of tear tester which is a pendulum type ballistic tester that is used to measure the energy loss during the tearing. So, when we take the tear strength it depends upon certain factors like the GSM of the fabric that is grams per centimeter square. So, more grams per centimeter square we see that there is more tearing strength and specific strength of yarn. More yarn strength will relate to the more tear strength that is threads generally break singly and so single thread strength is more important. And the other factor is the grouping tendency of threads in a fabric which leads to higher tear strength. Grouping is generally more prominent when the yarns are smooth and when can they slip over one another. And so, we in case of a mat weave or a basket weave we can see that or even it will be for that sake we can see that grouping of the threads is more common in this. So, thereby these fabrics will generally have more tear strength compared to the plain weave fabrics. Even when we consider the weave itself this is one of the factor that is considered. Plain weave has the lowest tear strength when we compare with the other types of weaves and also the spun yarn or the filament yarns when we compare both of these the spun yarns have lower tear strength than the others. And we can also see the knitted and the woven fabrics where woven fabrics are very easy to tear than the knitted. 
and the type of finish given to it. So, sometimes like you know wash and wear finish or drip dye finish or crease resistance treatments are given to the fabrics which generally reduces the strength of the yarn. So, coming to the Almondorf tester, it consists of a frame, a pedestal mounted on a rigid base with a pendulum and a pointer assembly. So, there are two clamps to hold the test sample, one is fixed to the pedestal and the other is fixed onto the pendulum. So, when in the resting condition, these two clamps come together where the fabric has to be clamped at that particular point. So, the dimensions of the clamping surfaces are at least 25 mm wide and 15 mm deep. So, they will align only when the pendulum is in the starting position. So, there is a pointer on the pendulum which moves and this its friction is enough to stop it at the highest point when reached by the pendulum when the pendulum swings. So, the pointer stop is adjustable to set the instrument at 0. So, there is a scale in front of the pendulum on which the pointer moves and an adjustable knife is mounted on the bracket centered between the two clamps for making a slit initially in the fabric specimen which makes around 20 millimeters of slit when it is activated. So, there is a lever present at the base of the machine which holds the pendulum in an upright position. So, when pendulum is released it swings and when swinging a part of the clamp is in it and so it tears the test specimen. So, a set of check weights are also supplied with the tester for verification of the scale and for calibration. So, the test specimens which are to be cut have to be done both warp way and weft way testing can be done each one of 100 mm length and 75 mm width. 10 samples are required for both the warp way and the weft way and they have to be conditioned at a standard temperature for 48 hours prior to testing of the fabric samples. Now, the first procedure for testing is positioning the pendulum in the initial start point position along with the pointer and then when the two clamps are together then the test specimen is placed in the clamps and then it has to be tightened in such a way that equal tension is applied on both the clamps and then you have to depress the integral knife handle wherein the initial cut is made. After the pointer is moved to the stop position, the pendulum is released by the releasing knob and so it starts swinging and also tears the fabric along with it, with it moving one of the jaws away from it. So, the difference between the starting height and the finishing height is proportional to the energy lost in tearing of the particular fabric. So, the reading is recorded from the scale that is indicated by a pointer there. The scale indicates the percentage of original potential energy of the pendulum consumed in tearing the specimen multiplied by the scale reading. When the capacity is changed to 3200 grams, you have to multiply the reading by 32 and when it is on 6400 grams, it have to multiply by 64. Generally, the tear strength in grams is a measure of k into mean value of the scale reading. k is where is the weight that is given on to the uh, pendulum. So, when fabrics are to be tested or when fabric does not tear sometimes, then we can use more than two fabrics in such a case together and do the tear test. But in such a case, we have to have the same formula, but it has to be divided by the number of samples that are present together. Why do we use 6400 grams is when the fabric does not tear, but the capacity of the pressure is not proper, then we add more weight to it making it to 6400 grams, so that the fabric can tear very easily and we can calculate from that the tearing strength of the particular fabric. The next aspect we are going to talk about is about pilling. It is a problem not only for textile and garment manufacturers, but also for consumers because it decreases the fabric quality and the user's comfort and does not affect the durability of the fabric. And but though it does not affect the durability of the fabric, but it affects the adversely in the processing of the fabric, especially in case of dyeing and printing. When spun thread is used in both knitted and worn fabrics, with every wash, wear and rubbing action, there are some tiny fibers that come out from the yarn due to breakage. So, these broken fibers will form into pills or fuzzy balls on the surface. They may be anchored onto the surface or they may fall off or adhere to that 
fabric for a longer time depending upon the type of fiber that is used in the fabric. In high friction areas like underarms, sleeves, bust areas and inner thigh, the formation of pills is very high due to higher level of abrasion. When we take the definition of pilling, pilling is a fabric surface fault characterized by pills of entangled fiber clinging to the cloth surface and giving a garment an unsightly appearance. So, when we take the mechanism of pill formation, we can see the first formation because of migration of loose fibers onto the surface. Then entanglement that happens to this fuzz forming into pills called the pill formation stage and anchoring fibers causing the removal of pills where pill wear off or breaking stage we see. The rate of this process depend upon the fiber, yarn and as well as the fabric properties. So, there are certain factors that are responsible for pilling. The first one is the morphological structure where smooth spherical shaped or circular cross sections have a greater tendency to pill. When we take the chemical structure, synthetic fibers are more susceptible to pilling than even the natural fibers. Then hydrophobic fibers generally produce pilling. Natural fibers have a very low abrasion resistance. Fiber structure when we take into consideration, pilling increases with increase in crystallinity. Now, fiber length also plays a role, where short staple or the shorter length of fibers when present in a yarn will generally favor pilling, because the number of bindings to form into a yarn are very less. Fiber fineness also plays a role, finer fibers gives less resistance to distortion and hence they pill. Strength, when higher the strength of the fiber, greater is the scope for pilling. Higher the extensibility, less is the tendency to pill for the fabric. Coming to the yarn characteristics, blend composition. Generally, when the composition contains a blend of synthetic fiber, generally there is a tendency for the fabric to pill. But when we increase the content of nylon, for example, in nylon wound blend, it usually increases the pilling in fact. The count of the yarn with heavy filament linear, fewer tendencies to pill. Fabrics made on silk and worsted systems give less pilling, cotton system more pilling and the most pilling is seen in the woolen system. So, when you make the yarn, one has to decide what type of end use it is going to be made. Now, the twist of the yarn also has a tendency on the pilling. Increasing the twist binds the fibers very closely, thereby lowers the pilling tendency. And then plying, ply yarns with soft doubling twist increases pilling. Then regularity of yarn. Generally, pilling is great if thick and thin places are present on the yarn. Hairiness. That is greater the hairiness, automatically there is a greater pilling that happens because of the short fibers that are pulled out of the yarn. Then as I said the staple or the short fibers generally have a greater pilling tendency because they are loosely held in the fiber bundle. Now there are certain fabric characteristics that also affect the pilling character that is weave. The movement of fibers at the fabric surface is influenced by the binding structure that is more pilling in twill and satin weaves than in plain because plain weave has more number of interlacings compared to twill and satin. Higher interlacement, lower pilling is seen in case of knitting. Intersection, that is intersection or the higher intersection restricts the movement of the yarn, thereby reduces the pilling. And the number of ends and picks per inch also. Higher the number of ends and picks per inch causes tight and compact construction, thereby reduces the pill formation. Now, we have an ICI pill box tester, which is used to test the pilling effect on the fabric. This tester contains two cubical wooden boxes which are constructed in 13 mm thick wood with internal sides of 235 mm prior to the lining and each box is lined with a cork finish inside with 3.2 mm thick and each box can be rot rotated at a preset revolutions per minute about a horizontal axis passing through the center of the two opposite faces. And coming to the preparation of samples, four specimens of each 125 mm into 125 mm are cut. 
and the seam elevance of 12 mm is marked on the back parallel to the warp and the weft direction. Now, the after that the samples are to be conditioned, then they are folded face to face and the seam is stitched on the machine and it forms into a fabric tube which are then mounted on the rubber tube so that the length of the tube showing on each side is the same and loose ends of the fabric can be taped with a polyvinyl chloride or PVC tape so that it is very firm and only the rubber tube is left exposed. Now, the fabric samples are assessed by comparing them with a set of photographic standards after the filling test is completed because the set of revolutions is been set and it rotates for a particular number of revolutions then stops that and the box is opened the samples are taken out and it is only a test wherein you can assess them by only looking at the samples with the set of photographs that are given along with the instrument. So, if there is no peeling on the fabric surface then you can call it as the grading can be 5 and if it is slight peeling it is 4, if it is moderate peeling 3, severe would be 2 and very severe peeling 1 rating has to be given for the samples. Now, there are certain effects of peeling which would depend on the degree of peeling because as I told you earlier the peeling is not only disturbing to the comfort of the wearer, but also it leads to aesthetic problems especially where the pills during the dyeing process would take more dye and dye in a deeper shade compared to the ground fiber or ground fabric creating a skittery appearance. And in printing the designs may look blurred because of the pill that is present on the surface and there is also a hindrance for the neat appearance of the fabric during finishing and it also affects the handle of the fabric and deteriorates the comfort properties of the fabric. So, these are some of the factors for each of these and the machines that are used or the testers used for conducting to identify the comfort and some of the mechanical properties of the fabrics.